I actually have a very short time to share with you. But the volume of what needs to be said, I don't think we can do that within the time available. So I'm going to be very selective. I would, I would look at those areas that I think uh, is most pertinent and I will go as the Spirit of God uh, leads me and enables me. Well, we have laid the foundation. The church is the temple of God. God doesn't live in buildings, he lives in people. Praise God. And it's so important that we understand that he wants our bodies well. When Jesus was here, wherever he went, the Bible says he healed them all. All. Have no doubt that God wants you well. But I want to bring a clause today. That clause may sound a little bit negative, but don't worry about it. Sickness, any form of sickness or disease, is a manifestation of the spirit of death. Did you hear what I said? Any kind of sickness. So whenever sickness is working, if you don't curb it, if you don't stop it, it will lead to the termination of that life. We must understand that. So it's not the will of God. God wants all people well. You must settle that in your spirit that God wants you well. However, in this life, on this side of the millennium, or on this side of the eternity, death is still working in men. There's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing as physicians or as individuals we can do about it. The process of aging when a child is born, we say, how old are you? Is that not so? We don't say, how young are you? We say, how old? Because as the moment the child is born, that child begins to age. Aging is a slow process of depreciation in our bodies. And there's nothing you can do about it. The body is depreciating. And it is depreciating because the spirit of death is at work. The Bible says death is an enemy. But that the last enemy will be taken away by the Lord Jesus Christ. When God invites men, people, to come to him, a lot of people don't understand that it is for their own benefit. If the eyes of people are opened to really see what provision God has made for them, there's no person that will not open his heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. Anyone who hasn't got the spirit of God hasn't got the spirit of life. He hasn't got the zoe of God. The spirit of God is a quickening spirit. It's a life-giving spirit. The word of God is a life-giving word. So when, when people reject God or reject Christ, they reject the spirit of life and death automatically works in them. But our portion is life and this morning light and life will fill our hearts and our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let me just move on. Let me uh, take time this morning to discuss what I'll call the prerequisites for health and longevity. The prerequisites, what you need to do. And uh, as I go on, I will see how the Spirit of God would lead so that I would uh, be able to maximize this time. Prerequisites for health and longevity. That is to say, what are the things that I need to have in my life? What do we need to have? What needs to be in place so that we can live in health and live long? Number one, prerequisite. If you and I will live long, if you and I will live healthy, we must prevent disease from entering our bodies. And we must prevent injury from happening to us. Did you get that? If you want to live long, if I want to live long, if any of us wants to live long, we must live our lives in such a way that disease does not enter into our bodies. Disease doesn't develop in our bodies. And we don't suffer any injury. 
Some people, there's no disease, sudden injury can take away their lives. Just like our, our sister shared this morning, if she had been in that shop, that may have been the end. Not because she's sick, not because anything happened to her, but just simply because injury happened to her. I've said it several times, if a woman is pregnant, I've watched it twice. It has happened in my presence twice. And I made up my mind. I determined in myself that it will never, never happen again. I've seen two pregnant women right in our presence, in my presence. They bled and they bled to death. Because, and the reason why, we, there were different reasons, but majorly because there was no adequate intervention at that time. They were not sick. A pregnant woman is not sick. Is she sick? She's only pregnant. It's a physiologic process. Have you ever seen a cow or a, you know, any animal when giving birth, dying? No. They don't even need help from anybody else. They just deliver by themselves. They take care of the child and within a few minutes, the child is uh, running after them or their baby is running after them. So it's a physiologic process. A, a woman should not lose her life because she's pregnant. And from the time I determined that, it has never happened. And it will never happen again in Jesus' name. There were two incidences. One, a woman was having fibroids. And they were so large. She delivered safely. We had advised for a section. But I said no. She delivered safely quite all right. In fact, she was being grateful. Oh, thank you and all that and all that. And then she began to bleed. And the bleeding would just not stop. One of the fibroid nodes was dislodged in the bleeding and it was bleeding from that point. We tried all the tricks. I was there present. Not in this particular place. Somewhere else where I was. And we did everything. And I professionally, professionally, we were thinking, now if we, this situation is very delicate. If we go in there and do something for her, and she doesn't make it, they will say it's a surgery that killed her. So we're thinking, how do we manage this? While we're doing all that thinking, and then we sent for blood. There was no blood on ground because that, pre that preparation was not made. While we're waiting for blood, they had to go to island maternity at that time to go and get blood. As they were bringing the blood into the hospital, she was still talking suddenly. She just, she just gave up. Oh, it was so painful. A young lady. her first and only child. And she had been wanting that child for a long time. She never got pregnant because of the fibroids. It was so painful. So painful. The other one was brought in the night from another hospital. And she said she was bleeding. And they just, it was already a little bit, shall I say, late. But she also bled to death. And I made up my mind that it never happened again. And I thank God it has never happened again. Why did that happen? Because there was no proper intervention at that time. He said, why? Is there no physician there? Why then is the health of the daughter of my people not improved? Why are they not getting better? Why was something not done? And I thank God from that time on, every time we've had the opportunity, the Lord has given us grace. And it has always worked out well. And it will always work out well in Jesus' name. You will not die before your time. I will not die before my time. Amen. None of us here shall die before our time in Jesus' name. Amen. We shall live, we shall, we will live our life to the full. Amen. It is the portion of God. If we are careful, if we are diligent, if we do what we need to do, it will happen for us. If that king, Hezekiah, could get 15 years after God himself said, it wasn't man that said it, God said, put your house in order, you are going to die. Sent the prophet to him. Ah, that man said no. <laughs> I have not, why should I die? Look at the way I followed God. I've done this. I've done that. I've done all that. No, 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 no. And he protested heavily. Before the prophet got to the end of his court, of his house, God said, go back to him and tell him, I've heard your prayers. I've heard your cry. 15 years has been added to your lifespan. If under the Old Testament, people can, that can be delivered to human beings, how much more under the dispensation of Jesus Christ, who is the spirit of God, who is the spirit of life, who is the king of kings. In his hands is life. 
No. Under his dispensation, we can get whatever we want. You will not die before your time in Jesus' name. Every orchestration of Satan to terminate your life, it shall not work. It shall not stand. The power of God shall disannul it. So, number one, you must prevent disease from entering your body. How does disease enter our bodies? There are portals. You must guard them. You must guard them. I'll just tell you a few because of our time. Gates. Your mouth gates. Disease can enter through what you eat and what you, what you drink. So you must watch out. So many people are very careless. They just eat anywhere. They drink anyhow. They just take things for granted. No. Many people feel that science is against God. But God is the creator of heaven and earth. The laws of science are his laws. There's no greater mathematician than God. <laughs> All the universe, the planets, the solar systems, the nebulae, they are working according to a particular rule. And they are working according to the rule of God. The earth rotates. The earth revolves according to a precision. A mathematical precision that took man years, even while still learning it. There is the law of gravity is the law of God. The law of biology is the law of God. The law of chemistry is the law of God. Praise God. Many years ago, <clears throat> I was sleeping. And suddenly, I was walking by the Spirit of God and I was showing a box, a small box. And that box is about maybe half of the size of this, maybe like about this thing, maybe like three quarters of this box I'm, I'm watching. And I was told to look into it. I was like a microscope there. And I looked inside. <clears throat> and I saw, excuse me please. I saw the structure of the human cell. Inside the human cell, there's something called the mitochondria. The mitochondria is the powerhouse. That's where energy is generated. All the metabolic processes take place in the mitochondria. And I looked into the mitochondria and I saw what they call the organelles. Organelles are the little tiny structures. And I saw that inside the mitochondria, there were machines. I was amazed. I saw, and the animal that was, was a flagellated, like a flagella. A flagella is a, is a small unicellular organism. And it has a tail. The t when it moves this way, the organism will move that way. When the tail moves this way, the organism will move that way. And I saw that in the mitochondria, there were things like, uh, like a lever, like a gear system of a car. I was surprised. I said, I'm, I'm looking at a gear, like, you know, if you have seen how a gear works, you know, there are, there are the, those, the, the, the round disc like that. When you change the gear, it goes from a smaller one to a bigger one, a bigger one to a smaller one, depending on the speed you want to go. I saw those things rotating. And as they were, when they rotate to this side, the tail of the mitochondria will go this way and the animal will move this way. When it begins to turn the other way, it will go the other way. I was, I was surprised. I was amazed. I said, what is this? That inside the mitochondria and inside the organelles, I saw structures. This thing, you, do you know the, the you have to, even the these things you can't see, the cell you cannot see by, with your own naked eye. So I was looking at the cell and I was looking at the substructure of the cell and inside the substructure, I was seeing an organized structure. I was dazed. And then the Spirit of God said, it says, man knows nothing yet. Are you listening to me? It says, man knows nothing yet. <laughs> Praise God. Our medicine of today, if the Lord Jesus Christ tarries, in 100 years, they will think we are primitive. Yes. They will think we are primitive. All the tablets and all these things you are taking, <laughs> they won't take them again. They just give you a small, introduce a small substance to your body. And to go to where the problem is. And to engineer it, just like that thing I'm seeing. It will engineer it and put it together. I saw this thing I'm telling you about 30 something years ago. Maybe like 35 or 36 years ago when I saw this thing. Recently, on a, on a program, the same thing I saw 30 something years ago, I saw it reproduce that scientists discovered there were organelles and were, those things are working like the gear system. When I saw it on TV, I yelled, I shouted. Now, listen to this. If I had been a scientist or I was scientifically minded, at that time, I was in the pastoral ministry, 
That's like my, <laughs> you know. And uh, I was still working as a doctor, but also in the pastoral. If I had given my attention to, to science, I would have told the people, inside the mitochondria, there is a gas system. They would have told me, no. Do you understand? They wouldn't agree with me. But I had seen what they had not seen. I'm trying to tell you that science is not against God and can never be. It is false science that claims to be against God. And that's what the Bible tells us in the book of Timothy. So, there is a room for the, 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 the things of, in, the, in, the, in your health. There's a human side and there's a divine side. There's a part you need to play. That's where I'm going. There's a part you need to play and there's a part that God will play in your life. It's not all prayer, all fasting, and all anointing. If you do that, you're going to make a mistake. When I studied, and I've been studying healing for a long time, and I'm still studying it, I asked myself questions. There's a man called Alexander Dewey, a great man of God, an anointed man of God. He died at 62, and I, and I asked myself, why would that be? Why would he die at 62? Our great Babalola of Nigeria, he died at 59. And I asked myself, why would he die at 59? He was anointed. Heavily anointed. Why? Recently also, our Idahosa died at 59. And I asked myself, why? Will a man anointed, I, you know, I mean, the kind of anointing that Idahosa had, or Babalola, and Alexander Dowie, these three people I've mentioned. But there is a human divine partnership that has to be in existence for us to live long and to fulfill our destinies. You will not die before your time. Yeah. I will not die before my time. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. So you must prevent disease from entering into your body. And you can do that by protecting the gates of your body. I told you what you eat, what you drink. What about the gates? Your nose. The air you take in is important. The air you breathe in. Some people live in houses, very damp. Damp house. Some people live in an environment very unhygienic. Very bad odor. The, the gutters, they are very dirty. And they do nothing about it. And disease can enter through their breathing in. Many childhood diseases, airborne infections, they come in because people take it in. Tuberculosis and many things like that can enter the body through the air we're breathing. They are, they are, they are transmitted to many, many such diseases are there. I may not be able to go into that at present. What about your ear? Especially with children, little children. Ear infections. Many times the child is having temperature. The mother is running up and down, not knowing, but usually if you look all over, you don't find. Check the ear. Discover that there is a problem inside the ear. And it has maybe a middle, the middle ear is having infections or the outer ear is having infection and the baby is just having temperature and they're wondering what is happening. Because that gate was not protected. Also for the adult, disease can enter your brain through your ear. Disease can enter your brain, your body through your nose. Can it even enter your brain through your nose if you're not careful. Little things can make a lot of difference. What about your eye? People can get injured in the eye. Those gates you need to protect. What about your skin? The skin gate. Disease can enter. You have a cut. There was a man. He was walking in his garden. And then he had an injury. Instead of taking care of that injury, he just took sand. Poured it on it and said, ah, we have been doing this. You know. Do you know what happened? He developed tetanus. He died at Lagos University Teaching Hospital. He died at Luth. He wasn't even 60 yet. Just from that small carelessness. So, you must protect your skin. Be careful. How you take care of your skin. Disease can enter your body through your skin. What about your private areas? Disease can enter. Either through the anal area or through the private area. Women or men through the passage of urination, your urethra and all that. Disease can enter the body. So you must protect yourself. The private areas is by hygiene. You protect that, those private areas by hygiene. You protect it by ethical behavior. I've seen a young lady, about 26. She died 
of HIV. And she got it because she had, she was inappropriate sexuality. She was careless. Careless. And that's why I contacted it. She was loose. When God gives us a law, it's for our protection. When God says, no premarital sex, it's for your protection. In heaven, God is not, there's no problem in heaven. <laughs> the problem is right here. When God says, don't do this, don't do that, he's not trying to put limit on you. He's trying to protect you from destroying yourself. When he tells a lady, don't get pregnant before your time. How many ladies, there was a one young lady like that, she came in, got pregnant, I was trying, and went, tried to do an abortion. And trying to do an abortion, she went to some quack place, and they perforated her uterus. Yeah, look at that. Yet, the God says, don't do it. It's for their protection. Because God doesn't want you to be pregnant without responsibility. There must be responsible conception. When, it's, when there's irresponsible conception, it can cause problems. If you deliver, even if you don't fall sick, you don't do an abortion, even if you do, and, and all that, when you have your baby as a single lady, it can be a very difficult thing. It can, be, it can change your whole destiny. So God wants to protect you. That's why I says, don't do it. It's for your protection. Many don't understand that. So we need to protect that area of our bodies. All the gates of our bodies, protect it. And you must deliver yourself. You must make sure you don't get injured. Very important. An injury comes, that can be physical injury. There are also mental injuries. Emotional injuries. I know a lady, she just went mad. Because... When she got married, the husband was so bad. And she could not, she was somebody who could not express herself. She couldn't, so she bottled everything in. And one day she just, she just went mad. Because it was just too much. And she didn't know how to handle it. She didn't know who to talk to. She just lost control. So important. Injury must not happen to you. Injury must not happen. So you must prevent injury from happening to you. Not only just physical injury, although physical injury can terminate life. Emotionally, the person may still be alive, but the quality of life is completely, is completely gone. There's physical injury where maybe there's a, part, a part of the body is destroyed. Recently, there was a young man, a man came with his wife. It was, it belonged to the, uh, well, I don't know your ethics here, but let me use say the other religion, so to speak. <laughs> Though I don't mind. Uh, you know, so, um, and I tried to talk him in. He said he was before a, a choir master in a Baptist church. And that he went back, or he went to that region and became, and I said, you didn't know Jesus Christ. I was so blunt with him. I said, you never knew him. He met me in the hospital in my consult room. I said, you have never met Jesus Christ. There is no way, there is no earthly way you can meet the Lord of life and go to darkness. It's like me. I am sitting in a room. And the room is lighted. Like this place is now is lighted. And I just pick myself up. And I go to a place where everything is shut down. No light, no nothing. And I dwell there. And I say I prefer that place to the place where it's lighted. This is crazy. So I said, you never met him. I said, if you, you, are just the, you are just a choir master. You are just there. You never really knew him. If you know him, you cannot depart. There is no way. Because the, the, spirit, of God, the, 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 the spirit of God, the spirit of life, there is a witness in you. He said, he that has the father has the witness in himself. He said, he that, do, he that doesn't have the son doesn't have the father also. If you have the son, then you have the father. And there is a witness in you telling you that this is it. There is no way it's impossible. Then he told me he had been having issues, having dreams. I told him, I said, so I give me examples of years of ministry. And I told him about people I've met there was a young man who I met in a hospital. I was on call at, at Bagheera General Hospital. I was on call that night. He came in. He took rat poison. He wanted to kill himself at 27. I said, no, you cannot kill yourself at 27. He said, he's tired of life. He's just suffering. Suffering all the way. I said, no, there is somebody that, can, that has come to take your suffering. And that that person can lift you out of this thing and can give you an, a life that you will never believe is possible for you. He said, who is that person? I said, Jesus Christ. <laughs> he said, I'm, he said I, I'm a Muslim. You can edit it later if you like. <laughs> you know? So, and I told him, I said, no. I said, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. 
I said, there's no way you can go to the Father except through him. I shared the scripture with him. He said, well, there's no I said, look, if I tell you, pray in the name of this, you say this, pray in the name. I said, look, there's only one God in the universe. Only one God. And our problem is the way to him. How do we get to this one God? I said, I know if there are two, two gods in the universe, then there's confusion. <laughs> there's only one God that created everything. I said, how do we relate to him is the problem. And I'm telling you that this is the way. He said, how are we sure? I said, okay, let's ask that through God. I said, if any man will do the will of God, he will know of the doctrine, whether it is true or not. If God knows that this person's heart will do the will of God, God will reveal it to him. I said, if you are true, God is going to speak to you. He said, let's pray. So I just said, almighty God who created heaven and earth, this young man, he wants to kill himself, but it's not right. Please reveal yourself to him. And I went. The next day when I came, he said when he slept, he said his room, the roof of his room was taken away. Wow. <laughs> and he told me, he said he saw Jesus Christ on the right. And he said he saw Muhammad on the left. And Jesus pointed to him and said, I am the way that leads to the Father. You know, when I came the next morning, he shared this to me. I said, you have your answer. <laughs> Praise God. I said, and God gave it to you because he saw you. From that day, in those days, we used to, I used to do hospital administrations. Hospital ministry. We started in the early days. And he, be, he became a member of that hospital ministry. I'm still looking for that man. That's why I shared this testimony. I'm still looking for him. So somewhere I'm going to meet him again. So I share this testimony because I want to connect with him again. You know, and he became, a, he became part of us and followed the Lord Jesus Christ. This man who came to the hospital, who said he was a, a pastor, a Baptist pastor, I told him, when he told me the dream he has been having, that's been getting on a trailer, a trailer has been trying to cross him, a trailer has been trying to cross him. I said, look, I said, God is wanting you because God loves you. And God doesn't want any man to perish. He knows that you are not you are, you are deceived. He said, no. Do you know that after he left me, I said, please, take this thing seriously. That very week, he said he had been having that dream for a long time. That very week, he ran under a trailer. The leg was crushed. And eventually, it had to be amputated. But God had been warning him. God had been speaking to him. Some of us, God has been warning us. We better take, take heed. Praise God. Protect yourself from getting injured if you want to live long. Many have died before their time because they didn't take heed. They were not careful to protect themselves from getting injured. We don't have time to discuss how can we protect ourselves from injuries. There are many, many ways, but that will be the topic for another day. Number two, what are the prerequisites? Number two prerequisite, if you want to live long and live in health, you must detect and treat disease early before it causes any symptoms. This calls for screening and checkups. A lot of people don't do screening and they don't do checkups. It is not wrong. It's not faithless to do screening and checkups. When God healed that leper, he said, go to the priests. Let them check you up to see whether it is so. There's nothing wrong with doing checkups. Nobody's going to live here forever until Jesus returns and brings eternal life. Makes it the reality for man. There is a time appointed. In your own time appointed, fulfill your destiny, fulfill your purpose. For you to do that, I've told you the first point. The second point is you must detect and you must treat disease early before it causes any symptoms. That means while it is still early, you will protect yourself. There was a young lady. I was called. Please, this is reality now. So don't mind if I talk about maybe somebody dying. Don't worry about it. You will not die. <laughs> so don't worry about that. A few days ago, they called me about a young lady. Admitted her for some time in the hospital. When she came to me, she had fourth stage breast cancer. She was 36. Fourth stage breast cancer. Do you understand what I mean? That means terminal breast cancer. She was still talking, laughing, joking. She was in pain. We started on chemotherapy. Why did it get to that level? I asked her. I said, how did you allow this thing to get to this level? She said, people had been advising her, giving her advice, this one will work, that one will work, lemon, lime, 
these Jews. That, I said, all this thing they write on, the, on Google and internet. <laughs> and some people just live on Google and internet. Anybody, I can write anything I like there. You can write anything you like there. It's a free place. Anything can go. So it's not everything that is there that is accurate. And I told this, and I, the, a pastor brought her to me. I said, how did this get to be? He said, he didn't know about it. I said, look, it would have been better for us if when we discovered it some time ago. I said, all the people who have been canceling you are wicked people. Why? Because they were giving wrong counsel. They were directly or indirectly responsible for that woman's situation. When there's a, you check, that's what we tell women, do checkups. Do a breast examination. Most common cancers, breast cancer, cervical cancer, check it, check it, check yourself. I know there was, a, recently there was a young lady who came like that. When I saw the cervix, I'll do an examination for her. When I looked at her, I said, this thing is suspicious. And I went to do, and I said, we must take a biopsy. In fact, she wanted to protect, but I said, it's for your protection. When we do it, it was a precancerous situation. That means something that will turn to become a cancer in a very short time. And I said, remove this womb. You already have two or three children. What are you waiting for? <laughs> Remove it. Praise God. Anyway, this other lady I was talking about, who had that first seed breast cancer, they just called me about two days ago that she passed on. Now, why did that happen? Because it was not detected and treated early, before it caused any symptoms. People have come look for a different reason only to discover there was a much more dangerous thing lying in their bodies which was discovered just by checkup. So, if we are going to live long and fulfill our destinies, you must do checkups. It's not wrong to do a checkup. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Before there are symptoms, when you are in your, especially when you are getting older, as you get older, 40 and above, there are some checkups you must do. Young men here, the most common cancer of, of male cancer is prostate cancer. You must do your PSA check. Take your blood sample. When you are going to 40, 45, take it once a year and check it. It does you no know, harm. Huh? After all, you will invest much more in your car. Is that not so? People, some people invest more in their cars than in their bodies. Invest in your body. Invest in your health. Do a checkup. Look at it. And see. If there's anything there. If there's nothing there, give praise to God. And continue to move on. If there's something there, see. Okay, what can be done about it? How can we deal with this situation? And take advantage of it. So, do checkups. 55 and above, checkups. 55 on, twice a year, do a checkup. Do a whole body checkup. Test your urine, check your blood. It doesn't matter. It's not because you are faithless. It's not because you are trying to invite sickness. No, you're just trying to be wise. That's all. The Lord will help us to be wise in Jesus' name. Amen. Number three. If disease is present, if it's clearly present, or if you see symptoms of a particular disease, do something about it before it causes disability or before it causes death. Do something about it. Take a step. What can I do about this? One of the first steps I tell people to do is pray about it. <laughs> Praise God. Pray for the church. That's what we do. Is any sick among you? Let him do what? Let him pray. Is any afflicted? Let him do what? Let him pray. Is any sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. If affliction, sickness, is it pray. So we ask God counsel. Many times we don't ask God counsel. There was a time, and I share this for all our benefit. A young man that I know did something I didn't like. And I, uh, I felt, not against me particularly, but against somebody very close to me. And I said no, and I went to God. 
I said, God, this young man has done this. And I, I said, I'm taking authority. I'm sorry. I'm saying this very frankly. Do you know there's authority in the church? All right? So you don't play games in the church of God. You don't take people for granted. You don't do things carelessly. You don't take your pastor for granted. <laughs> you give him respect that is due him. So I went to God. And I said, God, I am taking so and so and so and so from this young man. And I meant it. I said, I'm taking and I, I'm holding it in my hands. And then, after some time, I felt sick. Normally, I'm not sick. I felt ill. And I went everywhere to pray. I prayed here. I prayed there. I looked at it. You, I couldn't really put my finger on it, but I was just not okay. As I prayed about it, initially I said, okay, maybe malaria, I took some malaria, I took, and all that. Nothing. I kept, I prayed. Then one day the Spirit of God told me. He said, remember that young man? He said, forgive him. <laughs> Praise God. He said, forgive him. He said, you also, yourself have need of forgiveness from me. And I remember the scriptures. I looked at the whole thing. I said, no. So I released the man. When I released the young man, I got well. <laughs> Praise God. When I released him, I got well. So you see, sometimes those things, you know, these things are connected. There are spiritual laws. There are natural laws of health. The Lord will give us time. Some other time so we can be able to develop these things. Praise God. But if a disease, do something about it. Find out why. Why am I sick? Go to God and ask questions. Why am I sick? If there's a secret sin, whenever there's sin, sickness is not far away. The two of them walk hand in hand. They've been walking hand in hand from Genesis. And they're still walking hand in hand today. Through sin, death came into the world. We must understand that. Anywhere sin is present, many of us young people play with sin. If you do that, some of us elderly people will play with sin. In any form, in any way. If you break the law of life, death can come. It can come as sickness. The Lord will deliver us in Jesus' name. Amen. So you must find a solution to anything that's in your body. Many people have pain. There are sensors in your body. Pain. Pain is telling you something is wrong somewhere. You should do something about it. If you don't do something about it, there can be problems. Some people not pain. Just take paracetamol. Just take some pain reliever. But you should find out, why am I having pain? It's a signal that something is wrong in your body. So, you're having weakness, unexplained weakness. Find out why. Don't just say, okay, let me just buy blood tonic, let me just do this. Why is that so? And then take, pre, pro, uh, take active measures to make sure you solve it. Number four, because of our time. There's a natural process of age that comes to people. All persons, no matter what we do, we can't stop it. We can't stop it. I had a privilege in Moscow City when I was serving there as a missionary to meet Billy Graham. All right? So when I, there were ambassadors and many people there, I just walked up and said, Sir, can I have a time with you? She says, Yes. So we just went together to one side and we began to discuss. So I noticed that he wanted to give me his address in South Carolina. He was going to write me his address. When he was writing me the address, his hands were just shaking, 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 shaking. Ah, I was so touched. I said, this great man of God. Why is this man's hand shaking? But you understand? Then I understood. There's nothing you can do. When he spoke, you know, the voice was very strong. It was okay. But when he wanted to write for me his address and telephone number, his hands were shaking, shaking. Oh, I was so touched. I was so moved. That's to tell you that there is aging and there's nothing you can do about it. All right? I met T.L. Osborne. T.L. Osborne is a great man of healing. Is that not so? And, you know, when I, when I, sometimes, you know, even to, uh, to walk, to stand strong, because he was already getting very aged then. And I know that aging, you know, aging comes to all of us. The Lord will help us to manage aging well in Jesus' name. The time tells me that time is up. Number five, have access to the rejuvenating power of God. 
You must have access to the power of God. Have access to the power of God in your life. That's why you're in church. Have access. You must know the way to access. Many people don't know how to access God's power. God's anointing for healing to deliver them. The Lord would make that available to us in Jesus' name. Praise God. The time is up. <laughs> and this is how much we can deliver for today. But I'm sure other times will come and I'll be able to share more with you. The Almighty bless you. The Almighty keep you in sound health. It shall be well with you. God Almighty, the quickening spirit will quicken your mother bodies in Jesus' name. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Let's put our hands together as we appreciate Dr. Ajayi. Please. Um, I, I want to take like two, three questions. We don't do that on Sunday service, but I feel like we should take that. Is that okay? Okay, maybe two, three people. But sir, I'm going to ask the first one. <laughs> okay. Um, how you, you, you spoke like two, three times about aging process and there's nothing we can do about it. We, we want to feel young forever. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. We want to feel young forever. But sir, what can we do? Um, not spiritually now, maybe some physical things that we can do to slow down a little bit the effect. Abi, am I... Uh... Okay, very, very intelligent and pertinent question. I was going to develop that, but if I went into that, time will go. And I was watching the time. You know, so I had about 30 something when we started minutes and I knew that I can't deliver much in this time. So I just said, let me just go through it. But really, though aging is a natural process and an inevitable process, it can be slowed down. It can be controlled. And aging has to do with a number of biological changes that is taking place in the body. I may not be able to go into details, but let me say, what can you do about slowing down aging? Number one, when you are young, be very careful how you live. Many people have uh, put the process of aging in very difficult position or reverse gear because they had misused the body. They had pressured their bodies when they were young. So that the processes of aging, the process of depreciation, have gone very, very far. Some are majorly by their lifestyles. Lifestyle. What you eat. What you drink. I would have talked about the laws of nutrition today, but I couldn't. It would take a long time. It's a whole teaching by itself. How do you eat to eat properly? You know, the things you ingest in your body, you incorporate into the cells of your body. That's what makes, that's what the body uses to build itself up, to repair itself, to renew itself. It's what you put in. Many take a lot of junk food, junk drinks. Let me say this. Most of the drinks available today, the people who make them don't care. I am being very sincere with you. They just want to make it sweet, tasty, so you just drink it and consume it. And many of them are engineered to make, you, to, to make you dependent. So that you feel like, oh, I haven't drank Coke today. <laughs> I must have Coca-Cola today. There are ingredients there that will make you, and it doesn't really quench your thirst, you know. It actually makes you more thirsty, really. Because very salty and very sweet. It is said about 20-something cubes of sugar. It's in one bottle of, uh, you know, Fanta or Coca or something like that. Some people consume three of it a day. So you're taking like 60 cubes of sugar. <laughs> 60 cubes of sugar a day. Think about it as a young person. Your body will deal with it because you are still young. The energy of still... But as you get older, all that energy you drained when you are still young will begin to show up. And the reserves of your body will not be able to carry you through when you get older. What you eat, what you incorporate into your body is very important. Your body used to build itself up and renew itself. There are antioxidants in the body. All right? There are free radicals that the body produces. It's like the nuclear waste. You know the, the nuclear waste they produce in nuclear reactors. 
They have to look for a place where they will dispose it. There was even one place they brought it to one African country and they gave them money. So we'll give you some millions of dollars if you can collect this waste. <laughs> and that's why some of the, our bodies we use as toxic waste uh, reservoirs by what we drink and what we eat. So what you eat is very important. What you drink is very important. What you incorporate to your body can help aging. Then you must also, so there are foods that naturally deal with these free radicals in the body. The free radicals are very destructive. They're like bombarding your body, trying to de destroy but, but these antioxidants will cool them down. Major antioxidants, you find them in fruits and vegetables. So in your diet, there must be a lot of fruits and vegetables, more than the other things you are eating. Is that okay? So, if you consume a lot of that, less of the carbohydrate which we are used to, and the protein that men, you know, when you are past the growing state, it's children that need a lot of protein. They are the ones growing. They need to incorporate it into their body so that they can grow. As an adult, you must curtail. The, the, because when you take a lot of protein, the nitrogenous waste is more in your body. It can affect the way your body, I mean, the, 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 by, the end product or protein breakdown in the body is a lot of what I call nitrogenous waste, which can be toxic to the body. Some of them can be cancer producing. So you need to be very careful. As you get older, you reduce the protein you're taking. And if you're going to take protein at all, you must take protein that is easy to digest. And there is order. When a child is born, you give the baby milk, isn't it? There's, there's, uh, there's milk protein. Then from there, when the baby is a little bit older, you give egg. Is that not so? When it's a little bit older, you give fish. Then you now go up, maybe pork, then maybe this, and then maybe... The worst of meats, I've said it before, is goat meat. And a lot of people like a lot of goat meat. If you take goat meat, 14 days, it's still in your body. Yes, getting processed. Including the smell, including the goat smell. <laughs> including the goat smell, it's still there. So those of you who like, uh, you know, Isiewu, 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 uh -huh. <laughs> and who, you know, you go to the shop, you buy the, you know, suya, asun, and all these things, and some of the things they used to give it taste, they are cancer producing actually. Oh yes, yes, especially the the ones they bring, you know, the yaji and all that that the people add to the suya. I'm very dangerous. You know the kilishi and all these things? <laughs> you see now? <laughs> you see how it is? <laughs> so if you incorporate all these things into your body, you are just asking for trouble. Now and in later years. And then you have to tailor your diet to your person. To your person. If you, they're your stomach for people like pastor, you do a lot of fasting and all that, be very careful. There was a, I think it was Pastor Olivier Johnson, I think. He's in Ibadan, right? He was doing, many years ago now, you know, uh, he was one of the people, I was with uh, a, a group over there in Ibadan from UCH who were talking. That he discovered that he had, he had uh, I believe it's true, I haven't spoken to him personally, so I don't know, but I believe it's true, that he had maybe stones, right, stones, in the, in the kidneys when they were checking him. He was having pains, and when he checked, they said, this were our kidney stones. And it came from long fastings and not taking enough water. So we had to call all his pastors together. And when they did the check, they discovered that they also were having something similar. Yes, like the priest, like the... <laughs> so if you, if you follow your pastor's lifestyle, if you follow your pastor's lifestyle, then you are, what your pastor has, you will have. Both positive and both uh, negative. So, you know... Um, so that's what happened. And then he had to tell everybody, no, when you fast, take a lot of water. Make sure that you are hi well hydrated. All right? I don't know how much time I'm permitted. You know, there are two sisters like that. It's many years ago. They fasted. They were fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. They didn't drink water. After some days, many days, I don't know how many days now, the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to them and said they should stop fasting. They should go and eat. Go and drink. They rebuked him. How did I know they rebuked him? Because the one that survived told us. So they stopped. To cut long story short, one of them died in that process. 
They want to survive, so that's what happened. He told them. So the lifestyle is so important. You must be spirit-led. And you must do things wisely. There's a natural love life. God will not take it away from the earth. If you shut your nose and you say you're not going to breathe again, after five minutes, we shall carry you to the... <laughs> we shall carry you there because, because it is natural to breathe. If you say you are a super person and you drive into the water and you go deep down and you refuse to breathe, well, we shall come and take you and then... <laughs> you understand? So there are natural, those natural laws are there. Praise God.